This is nuclear physicist Dr. John Mullen. He discovered how to generate clean and free energy as opposed to oil. Days after this discovery, he died of arsenic poisoning. Dr. Don Wiley. He found the cure for HIV/AIDS. He mysteriously disappeared and later was found deceased. Dr. Mark A. Smith. He found a treatment for Alzheimer's. He passed away in a freak accident. This is Frank Suarez. He apparently found the cure for cancer. He mysteriously took his own life a couple of days later. I don't know, folks. This is suspicious, blowing my mind when I found out about it. Well, let me reassure you there that uh, none of this is accurate. This is all pretty much transparent nonsense. But this narrative, the dead scientist who dies mysteriously soon after some amazing breakthrough, is pretty popular on TikTok. I've done one video about this. I talked about the Mullen character. But let me show you how transparently silly these things are when you spend even a little bit amount of time researching what actually happened here. So let's talk about Don Wiley. Don Wiley was a researcher. He didn't discover the cure for AIDS. He died, by the way, like 23 years ago. Um, he his was involved in research, research on the immune system and viruses. Nothing that he did was amounting to a cure for AIDS or for HIV or even a treatment. Uh, and the you know, research into treating more and more effectively HIV has been progressing nicely before and after his time. And now we have extremely effective uh, treatments for HIV. Thank you. So how, how mysterious was his death? Listen, he was walking on a bridge and which had a very narrow space to walk on, had a very low guardrail. He was tall, six foot three. The guardrail was lower than his hip. And all it would have taken was a truck driving by or something, and he could have easily been pushed over and fallen over the rail. He didn't mysteriously disappear. He was found in the river below the, the bridge that he clearly fell over. It was just a, a freak accident. It was investigated. There's a really obvious explanation as to what happened. It was an unsafe bridge with too low a rail and too narrow a curb. That was the conclusion. There's zero evidence of any foul you know, work here that, that, that anything untoward is happening. There's zero evidence of anything like that. But the, the narrative is, is interesting. You know, it's a really, it's a bit simplistic. It's like he, this one guy, right, operating by himself discovered the cure for something, in this case, apparently HIV. And then days later, he mysteriously dies. So when did he make the discovery? Was it on a particular day? Like there was one day when he made the discovery and then two days later he's dead. And how did anybody know that he made the discovery on that one day? Uh, if he hadn't even had time to publish it yet or tell anybody. Um, are there spies in every research lab in the world? And when somebody gets too close to an answer, they mysteriously die. I mean, there's, you, there's no possible way you could make sense of this narrative when you think about it even a little bit. This kind of research takes a year. There's no like two days after a discovery. That doesn't even make any sense. It takes weeks, months, years to do the research to make advancements. That research has to get published. It has to get peer reviewed. You have to combine it with research being done by other researchers in other labs. It has to get replicated. No one person can do this. This is a research program funded by millions of dollars, by institutions. You're going to be working at a university probably. And there's many, 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 many people involved. And if you pluck one person out of this process, it's not going to really do much to alter the course of research. It's not like, oh, this one guy died 20 years ago. Now we have no idea how to treat HIV. It makes absolutely no sense. Let's talk. turn to the next guy, Mark Smith. Um, he, another, he, was a, he was an Alzheimer's researcher. He had some interesting ideas on Alzheimer's disease. He was focusing on the physiology of Alzheimer's, and he thought that that approach was going to be more, uh, more successful than focusing on the pathology of Alzheimer's. Without getting into the details, he, was a very, he made some significant contributions to our understanding of Alzheimer's disease. He didn't discover a treatment, let alone a cure for Alzheimer's. He just believed that 
the approach that he was taking was more likely to lead to a treatment one day. And you know what? Here we are 20 years later, and we do have effective FDA-approved treatments for Alzheimer's. We're right at the beginning of it, but we're making progress. Alzheimer's is a complex, very difficult disease. Again, no one guy is going to make or break Alzheimer's disease research. And also, what's the narrative here? Why exactly, again, do they not want us to effectively treat Alzheimer's disease? How does that fit this conspiracy narrative? We don't even get into that. It's just, this guy died mysteriously. How did he die? It was a hit-and-run accident. He was hit by a car. It happens. People die. You know, people are, get into accidents. They fall off bridges. You know, what the, what's happening is, you know, again, there's so many scientists around the world. You just you know, find a story of some scientist who died by an accident or by sometimes by nefarious uh, deeds or whatever, died, died by suicide, died by murder, died by accident. You take whatever research they were doing and then you just completely invent that they discovered the cure for whatever it is they were researching or they discovered some breakthrough technology in whatever area that they that they were you know uh, had expertise in, and then two days later they they mysteriously died. It's all made up. That narrative is all BS nonsense. We could take the third guy, Frank Suarez. This guy was a weight loss diet supplement guru, right? He wasn't researching cancer. He didn't come up with the cure for cancer. There is no the cure for cancer. Again, this one guy. Not even close to the you know cancer research in a way that he would be able to somehow come up with a cure for cancer that has eluded the world's cancer research for the last twenty years again makes absolutely no no sense on that level. He died by suicide. He was depressed. He was treated for depression. It happens. It's unfortunate. These are all tragic, but it happens. There's not really any significant mystery here. It was investigated. No foul acts were found. There was no reason to suspect it was ruled a suicide after an investigation. So, you know, what, again, the, when you think about not just like, oh, some weird thing happened, it blows my mind, but you actually try to put together an actually coherent story, which, you know, the conspiracy theorists never do, it doesn't make sense. You can't make the whole thing make sense. You know, so exercise your critical thinking a little bit here and also just do five minutes of research to find out what the actual information is. And also just this narrative about one guy making uh, this remarkable discovery that nobody else can replicate even after decades. Th that's not how science works, folks. It's not how it works. It's really impossible. That's not the way it's done. Uh, and there is no they out there, right? I don't know what world you live in, but there is no shadowy world controlling group that can just decide to bump off random people or scientists whenever they feel it's inconvenient you know for whatever maniacal control they have over events this is not the world we live in again this is just a made up narrative that people use i guess to promote their tiktok videos but you know think about it this is not true